everyone, it's Kino here. Thanks for joining me for another episode of Living the Yogi's Life, where I share with you the tips and tricks on how to translate the lessons learned on your yoga mat into your everyday life. Today I want to talk with you about truth, or more specifically, the truth. There was a time in my life where I thought of things really in black and white terms, and I thought, you know, whatever was my experience, it was the best experience, and it was the way, and the only way, and I was really excited and passionate. Not that I'm not excited or passionate anymore, but after 15 years of yoga practice, I've really come to understand that while there are indeed universal truths, there are indeed things that are absolute, like the experience of divinity, which we all can tune into through the inner tradition of yoga, it is our subjective experience of truth that really leaves a lot of room for the gray zones in life. And the more that we identify with black and white terms or absolute thinking, the sort of worse off we are and the less peaceful that we are. For example, if you know definitively that a yoga posture should be done in a certain way, it kind of blocks off your mind to other ways you might try that yoga posture. For example, if you feel like headstand should always be done with the shoulders engaged in a particular way. If someone comes to you and says you should try to do something Something else with your shoulders. You'll kind of stand your ground and say, you know, I know that this is the right way. Well, what I've learned from doing the yoga practice is that it's not our perfection, it's not our knowledge that actually connects us with others. It's the belief in our own fallibility that makes us more humble and makes us more kind. So if you just relax a little bit and begin to understand that maybe there's one subjective truth for the way a headstand works, but there's many different versions of headstand that might actually be really beneficial. So the more that you practice yoga, the more that you understand that your mind is big, big enough to contain at least two seemingly opposite truths without invalidating the other truth. For example, one person's subjective experience doesn't invalidate another person's subjective experience of that same experience. So what I mean by that is our experience of life is shaped by our thoughts, our vantage point, our viewpoint. And it's our thoughts that determine uh, how we see the world, a little bit like the viewfinder in a camera. And the more thoughts that we have, the more obstructed the clearer view of reality can sometimes be. Even if you see reality completely clear, Clearly, we only have our viewpoint, we only have our vantage point. So the yoga practice teaches you to clean off your lens, to clean off the lens of your thoughts as often as you possibly can, and to expand the viewfinder so you can have as wide a paradigm as possible. Sometimes it's hard to accept things that are outside your known paradigm. It's hard to accept things that are outside what you know to be the truth. But with yoga practice, you're attempting to expand the mind, to stretch your mind so that you can contain something that might have really disturbed you at some moment in your life. So you can contain that in your notion of truth so that truth isn't definitive and doesn't divide people. Instead, truth is expansive and inclusive and can make room for more than a black and white version of the way you do a headstand or the way you see life or the way you see anything really so that your mind is strong enough and big enough to hold the whole world in what is perhaps the only vibration that is big enough to hold two seemingly opposite truths in its own vibration. That's the vibration of love. The more that you love yourself and you accept your light and your shadow and you accept your own blackness and your own whiteness, you live in the gray zone, in the equanimous place between extremes, the more that you'll be able to accept and love the whole world and all of its you know, divergent experience of truth. So when your mind is that big and your heart is that open, then yoga is working to create the equanimous mind that understands that strength is flexibility, that to be strong is to be flexible enough to be open-hearted. So your strength is your compassion and flexibility is fierce. It is the, the fierce strength of equanimity that makes you flexible enough to accommodate many different points of view, to bend this way, bend that way, to be straight in a headstand, but also to be open and strong in a backbend so that you can contain all of these different ways of being, all these different truths, all these different postures inside of yourself so that you're able to walk with the presence of a yogi in every situation in your life and be that force of healing and be that force of peace in the world that is the true heart of the yoga lifestyle. I hope you're inspired to do the inner work of yoga and delve deeply within yourself each time you get on your mat. Namaste.